Dubai has been built by Indian laborers and now there are over 2 million Indians living here in Dubai. There are more Indians here than local Emirati people in fact. There are more Indians here than any other ethnicity. Indians outnumber everybody in Dubai. So does that make Dubai part of India? That's a really interesting question but not one we're going to answer right now. We all think of Dubai as the city of gold but there are two types of Indian immigrants here. There's the highly paid, highly skilled people, then the lowly paid, lowly skilled people like the manual laborers. And today we're going to explore how both these types of Indians live here in Dubai. What are the differences? My Parsi friends from Mumbai are highly skilled Indians. So I'm here at the housing complex now to show you guys around. It is a different world here. Even coming from New Zealand, Dubai has this extreme luxury and this extreme quality of life like you're going to see right now. These housing developments in Dubai have absolutely everything. There's clean, wide streets. There's beautiful, beautiful gardens everywhere and there's gardeners that come around and, and do all this. They even ride on these buggies here. People don't have to walk here. They have these amazing gardens and land for the residents to relax on and these water features. You have these beautiful streets and then this is the pool and there's a gym there and then there's another pool. This is a much much bigger pool and there's two pools. There's a kids pool here as well and I can't actually go into those pools and give you a good view because there's so many people swimming and women sunbathing with their brows off so yeah you got to be careful. I bet you guys didn't imagine that woman with their bras off here in Dubai. In these silos behind me they have organic farming here. This is a sustainable type of uh, man. You can't even call it a housing complex right? I call this resort living. So they have a silo for organic vegetable farming right there. And there are like I don't know 10 or 20 of these silos around this complex where locals can go in and take whatever fruit and veggies they want. So there's lettuce, there's chili, there's herbs, there's spices, everything. And it's all free and it's all included in their residency package here. These are the buggies that people ride around on so you don't have to walk so far. And yeah, it just keeps getting better. You've got a basketball, a tennis court, you've got a soccer court. This place has absolutely everything. It's insane. You've got more outdoor gyms here. And then behind here, you've got a resident patch where anyone can come in plant their vegetables and grow things. There's even an animal sanctuary here of roosters with chickens running around freely. You've got goats and the goats have their own little house here and they've got their own ladder so they can actually climb up there where they are. I was wondering how they got there. Their own little ladder there and the goats can climb up and sit on the roof and sunbathe. Crazy. And then over here you've got the donkeys. Can you believe this man? It's that's incredible. I don't know what they're going to do with these animals. I guess they're just here for the kids. Maybe they eat them. Who knows? Just in case you have a horse, there's a dog park here as well. And of course, this wouldn't be Dubai without your housing society having a mall as well. So there's a mall here of restaurants and apartments on top as well. You can find a ton of food here too. So there's German, there's pizza, there's Mexican, there's Turkish food. Everything. You can't really call this place a housing development right it's more like a resort just look how stunning everything is here it's five star the entire way the quality I mean, not the quality of life the standard of living here is huge the standard of living is the highest I've ever seen in the world I nearly missed one thing but then God came in and I mean Allah came in he reminded me there is of course a mosque here as well because this is a Muslim country and every housing development must have a mosque. Let's go see if anyone's actually there because I don't think there's that many Muslims living here. And actually the mosques here sound a lot nicer than the temples do in India because they're kind of singing, they're not kind of screaming like you hear in India. It's quite soothing and of course it's on a loudspeaker so if you're at home you don't have to actually go to the mosque. You can pray at home it's quite convenient and it's just something you have to live with if you choose to live in a country like this. I'm going the wrong way I'm going to the female prayer room where you're not going that way. 
and yeah because we're in a Muslim country things are quite segregated when it comes to men and women restaurants here even have separate dining halls for both men and women or families and men they're called and I uh, hope Allah's not going to get angry at me for talking while he's singing better shut up now the prayers only go on for about two or three minutes so and like I said the guy's singing so it's not very disruptive if you're not a Muslim and you are at home doing work or whatever it's a very peaceful sound and I actually enjoy hearing it but you guys know what I'm not that interested in luxury living yeah it's impressive but what interests me is the lives of the um, Admi and especially in India I love Indian village life and culture life and culture in the village in India is so so rich here in these housing developments they just kind of feel like westernized and soulless and you don't get that feeling of community or culture here you especially don't get it here in this housing development because there are no local Emirati people here I don't know where they are you don't see them here in Dubai but I'm gonna go to the old souk the old market and try find them tomorrow but at the moment I'm here in this housing development and this one is actually done a lot better there is a sense of community here but I know a lot of these westernized ways of living can feel quite solace and quite in contrast to Indian society living living in an Indian housing society I mean and living in an Indian village especially so this is how the highly paid highly skilled Indians are living here in Dubai but let's go find the Ahmad me let's go find the common man let's go find the laborers here who are building Dubai and let's go have a masala chai with them and you're not going to believe the price that we're going to pay for this chai in the Indian laborers area we're here with Johan and we're going to the laborer mall right now and that's where they all live and it's where Johan goes to have his one dirham tea and his 15 dirham haircut all right I've made it to the housing societies where the Bangladeshi the Indian and the Pakistani workers live and as you can see behind me it is quite a lot different to how the high income earners are living and there's no luxury here it's not like Arabian ranches or any of those other housing societies that I've been at the last few days and the Indians who live here they earn around 800 dirhams a month and that is a lot more like two to three times more than what they would earn in India if they had a job there because a lot of these guys are from rural backgrounds where there might not even be any jobs in the villages there so the pay is still good for them and the living conditions are you know not bad they have AC and they really need it here because it gets so so hot here in the summer and it's clean people aren't wearing their chuckles inside but as you'll see there are a lot of chuckles outside each door because so many people live in these small concrete apartments so it's meant to be I think four people per room but as you can see from the chapels it's a lot more than that I think up to eight people will share this room the guys who are working during the day will go out to work and the guys who work the night shift will come in and they'll sleep here as well and these apartments are actually provided by their employers this is employee accommodation and it's everywhere in this area and it's all centered around this this central mall that we're gonna go and check out next okay so I just chatted to somebody I found the local here and I, I chatted to them and I can't go inside the house he can't show me because there's a camp boss here at this labor camp and you have to take permission to do anything from the camp boss and there's been a lot of controversy around how these guys are treated and how these guys live here in Dubai in the past and from what I can see at the situation isn't bad they're not living in poor conditions but yeah he is too scared to show me inside and be on film just in case he gets in trouble because if you get in trouble here in Dubai yeah you should be worried bad things can happen to you and you know you could get deported his family definitely relies on the income that he sends back these guys send back around something like 60 to 70 percent of their earnings back to India they remit it back to India and billions of rupees are coming out of Dubai to support people back in India that's how it is you know people work to look after their family and support their family here and that's why these guys are here these guys aren't here for fun to work 
It's an epic job. They're just here to earn money and remit it back to their homes in India. And like I said, the money is good, so their families are probably living a lot better from this money that these guys are providing. So yeah, they won't do anything to jeopardize their employment, and I understand that, so I won't go any further, I won't push any further, and I won't ask anybody else to show me inside their house because I don't want to get anybody in trouble here. But I have seen in there, and I can tell you they're small little cubicles with two bunk beds, one on each side. So you put a bunk bed on the left, a bunk bed on the right, and it's, you know, one person sleeps per bunk bed. So you've got four people to a room, and on the doors of the room they have the people's names who are sleeping in that room, who the room has been allocated to. Actually, I'd liken the conditions to like a Western hostel or a hostel in India. Okay, sir? Tiga? Alright, let's get out of here. Let's go check out the mall. And let's get a one dirham tea. Let's go drink some tea with our, our NRI brothers. Alright, this is Johan's tea stall. And you get everything here. Hi. Sorry. Do you accept a rupee? It's India money. Ha. Egg, egg, egg chai. Egg chai DJ. Something. Go to India. Go to India. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Go to India. I like that. Ticket na kya? Wonderum. Wonderum. Yeah. Wow. Shabash. Ha. Egg chai. Aap kaha se? Where are you from? India. Kerala. Kerala. Oh, yeah. you don't speak Hindi then. You guys speak English. Here you go. Thank you, G. Okay, All right, our bros from Kerala. So I shouldn't be speaking Hindi to him. He speaks English. They speak perfect English in Kerala. And actually, I should have mentioned, 40% of the Indians here in Dubai are from Kerala. That is a huge number. That's like around a million Keralites that are here in Dubai. And we've got a bunch of friends here, G. Up uh, Pakistan. Pakistan. Pakistan say Pakistan make a high. Karachi, Karachi, Karachi say Acha. Me Nega, me Lahore Gaya, uh Islamabad Gaya or Peshawar Gaya. Peshawar. Never Bakunha. Or Halim Mera Manpasant Kanahe. Halim Ali. And the tea is awesome. You know it's a it's a twenty rupee cup, it's not a ten rupee cup, so it costs one dirham and one dirham is twenty rupees, so it's damn cheap. I couldn't actually imagine that you could get a tea for one dirham here in Dubai. Because everything's so damn expensive here, right? But no, that's the amazing thing. You can find a 20 rupee tea chai here in Dubai. Crazy. Exactly the same price as India because this is, this is double the size of a 10 rupee tea. Crazy. We're gonna get some samosas too. I just got about 20 subscribers just from standing here actually. They're all busy looking up my channel. I should just stand here all day, bro. Just yeah. stand here and get subscribers. Yeah, a million subscribers yeah. by, by the evening. Let's convert every single Indian and Pakistani and Bangladeshi here into a Karl Rock subscriber. Pakistani. Uh, Pakistani. You're from Pakistan? Yeah. Ah, Bohuraja. Bohuraja. <laughs> wait, wait. You have to subscribe to my channel, bro. Yeah, good. Mere paas YouTube channel, eh? Subscribe KG, eh? No? Okay, that's right. Ah, G. Type in Karl Rock. And again, as you can hear, it's time to pray. And these guys, of course, they have a mosque as well. And the mosque is quite nice. It's right behind me, right there. And that's where the sound's coming from. So these guys should be going to pray right now. All rushing off to the mosque. I got my hair cut here last week from one of my brothers in there. One of my friends from Kerala. I think today I'll go get a head massage and a facial. Hey John. Yes, you have a zero film? Degi? Zero, degi, but it didn't look much like it. Yes, it's not. It's a film set in my life. It's a little shooting. Yes, it's your city. So let's go. And actually life isn't too bad for the guys living here in these labor camps. The camps are okay. They're getting paid two or three times what they would in India, so they can afford to come to the mall here, hang out, buy some, some snacks, spend time with their friends, drink tea. And everybody just comes and kind of hangs around outside the mall here. So you'll see people sitting on the ground there or standing over there by the mall. And yeah, it's like a place to hang out and people are actually sitting on the road as well, just watching the cars go past. Let's go see what they're doing over there. Hi! 
How are you, Kese? Tiger? Okay, so I worked out why people are standing here, and it's because the labor buses, they come here and they pick up people to take to work for the day. So these guys are hoping to get some work on the night shift here. That's why they're sitting down on the road here waiting for their next job. And one thing you'll notice here in Dubai is that Pakistanis, Bangladeshis and Indians, they're all living here together peacefully. There's no hatred there like the media will have you believe and like politicians will have you believe. And I've been to Pakistan, I've been to India and I've talked to the common man and there's no hatred there. It's just politics, it's just the media creating all this rubbish stories. Pakistanis and Indians are brothers and they're living like that here. So you've seen both sides of Dubai now, the extremely luxurious side and then the Am Admi side, the lower cost side, the side which is closer to Indian living actually. And I'm so happy that I've been able to come here. This is where the people are. This is where the friendliest people are. They'll come up and chat to you, offer you tea and everything like that. It's just like being back in India, being back in an Indian society and being back in a, in an Indian village. It's awesome. Now tell me in the comments, did you think you could find a tea here for one dirham? Do you have any idea? Oh my God. One of those guys started showing me his marijuana, his drugs. God. You do not want to get caught with drugs in Dubai. It is not worth it. I can't believe he takes the risk. You'll get deported straight away. It is just not worth it here. Damn. Brave guy. No way I was going to film that.